Hey everybody, this is Nova Social Impact Filmmaking Club, and today we're going to be talking to you about ChatGPT. Yes, that ChatGPT. A groundbreaking machine learning chat box from OpenAI that can generate complex, human-like responses. And one of the really cool things about ChatGPT is that it has the potential to change the way we think about education. In the future, ChatGPT could be used to create personalized learning materials and feedback for students to learn more efficiently and effectively. However, there is the risk that students become too reliant on this tool and don't develop their own critical thinking skills. It's important to both consider the benefits and the risks of using ChatGPT in education. Especially in areas where human creativity is pertinent, such as writing. Except, we should mention that everything we've said so far was written by ChatGPT, and we've only been reading off its script. The applications of ChatGPT are truly fascinating. However, it also lies in a gray area. What are the acceptable use cases of this technology? Should schools be worried about this? Is this the end of education? So we went out to the Nova community asking students, teachers, and even alumni to find the answer to this fundamental question. Are we even ready for this? What do you think of ChatGPT? Of what? Chat GPT. Oh, I think it's um, pretty lit crazy. In a positive way? Oh, I can't, I don't know. I don't know. I think that it's going to be really funny in 10 years when everyone gets busted for using that and then their job fire them or something. I think it's going to revolutionize the way we think about what we need to learn. In the sense that a lot of things that we thought humans had to do, they no longer have to do. And we need to rethink what we need to be teaching students all across New Haven. Hello. I'm actually quite excited. What I hope is going to happen is that ChatGPT will make kind of like the mechanics of writing and the things that we try to teach you, not me as much as your, your English teachers, um, easier. But what that means is that it can hopefully free up time for you to do more of the thinking and like actually like, you know, making connections in your writing between different topics, thinking about your thesis. Oh, I see it as hugely valuable when I have a, a class of 18 and like I can't be with each of them, answering questions, Googling documentation, like it's really nice for them to have. And I think it has somewhat limited utility within the academic realm. Half the information it gives you is often just straight up incorrect. Somewhat overhyped by the media, it's, it's not as powerful as people think it is. Um, so there's a case to be made that people are gonna use it to like, you know, write an essay, you know, type it in like, hey, DVD, make a paper for me. I don't wanna do it myself. But, I mean, I don't know. I've read them, right? They're not that good. And they can't do things like, you know, cite sources and stuff well. My gut feeling currently is that, I guess kind of the same sense as a self-driving car, in that, like, someday it'll be probably really dang important and pretty transformative, and that someday is probably a lot closer than we think it is. But as of right now, it's kind of like a cool, neat thing of like a, oh, hey, neat, not a, oh, wow, that changes everything. I don't think teachers should be worried about it, though. Uh, maybe, actually, maybe history and English teachers, like, a little bit. I think about the calculator, right? So when the calculator was first invented, I'm sure teachers were mortified, but then we learned how to use it as a tool. There's a Google conversation a long time ago, right, which is like, what is the point of memorization? With Google, the ability to memorize is lessened. So all you're talking about right now is essentially augmentation of a person's natural ability to do something. And if ChatGPT is as good as it seems to be, then a human being's natural ability to do, to write in a certain way is going to be de-emphasized. It's just not going to be as important anymore. We're missing the point, I think, in the creative aspects. It's not the value of the product, it's the value in, for us, you know, of the process that is being undervalued. Because it's all about the process. So, like, even if you can get that generated to you in two seconds, like, it's what you take in from it. What do you think of ChatGPT? Conflicted. I think at least the current version, there's some pretty large, like, weaknesses that you can see. Like, the things that you ask it to do, it, Clearly, it's just like goes through and checks the box and makes sure that it does the things. But like any tool, I can 
and see ways it could be abused. If it is a tool in your learning, that's amazing. But if it removes the process, if it replaces your learning or replaces experiences, I feel like it should not be an oh it, it should be an option, but it should not be the primary thing that you use. I would be curious maybe to try it once, but it's yeah. not. I mean, as I say, as someone who has, in my own small ways, engaged with creative artistic endeavors, um, I know what it means to get satisfaction in doing that. And I know I wouldn't get it from that. Like one thought that's been like vocalized by a lot of people is that like now is the time to use it before they start regulating like whether or not you can use things like, like AI bots and chat GBT. So like people are like, you have to use it now before you can get in trouble for it later. If you're talking about plagiarism, which is a significant thing like in the academic world, uh, you should clearly define those lines as to who owns what comes out of ChatGPT. The boundary between like what it means to to plagiarize and not, which I think has been really clear up until now, will kind of be blurred when you have these machines where you ask it a question and it produces a response, but you don't really know where that response came from. That poses a risk for teachers. Is this student plagiarizing someone else? But someone else is an AI that is just code. And to be honest, like right now, I don't think there's any like solution that I can go like that and think of. I, I think it's kind of against Nueva's philosophy to do sort of, you know, like the pop quiz mentality. But yeah, I think that's, that's one possible, uh, you know, outcome of this type of thing. There's going to be a very monumental shift. I don't know if it'll be like the largest shift you've ever seen, but it's definitely going to impact the way we write essays. I think it's a thing that I'll be forced to be part of the enforcement of and dealing with other people's worries about it. We should definitely learn about it. I mean, I haven't spent too much time, but I'm hoping in the next couple months to play around with it just because I want to see what's possible. And you know, if there are things that GPT, ChatGPT does that I think could be useful to me as a teacher, then I definitely want to use it. I mean, I don't want to just throw away something because I'm worried about it. Um, but I'm not sure yet, but I'm excited about some of the potential. As we enter a new era of technology, it is important to consider the ethical implications of tools like ChatGPT. What are the limits of this technology and who gets to decide them? What are the privacy implications of data collection and storage? Who owns what the AI creates? OpenAI? The prompt writer? And finally, how is this model being trained? Machine learning models can sometimes be biased because they are trained on data sets that reflect society's pre-existing behaviors. Sometimes those are biased against certain groups of people. And that is a very, very real reality that we must face when dealing with, you know, NLP tools like ChatGPT. So while ChatGPT may not be the AI that takes over the world, it does represent a new frontier in AI technology, and we must grapple with these ethical questions as we move forward. We hope this video sparks discussion and helps shape the future of AI in Nueva and beyond. Thank you. Hi, this is a bit of an editor's note right here, but we're planning on revisiting this topic in about a year to see how things have and have not changed with ChatGPT and Nueva. So stay tuned for that. And again, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed and please feel free to share it with all of your friends.